Hey everyone, welcome back to Six Sister Stuff. Today we're making three desserts that are no bake and dump and go. So my name is Kristen. My name's Elise and we're so excited to show you these dump and go desserts. We grew up having a lot of family parties and potlucks and we still do and everyone's supposed to bring a dish. So the easier, the better. And I love that these desserts are no bakes. If you need to throw something together last minute, these are perfect for that. No cook time, really simple, really easy. Yeah, and that's usually my problem. I'm like a last minute person. <laughs> yeah. And so dump and go is exactly what I need. So if you guys are ready, let's get cooking. So the first recipe we're making today is no bake mini Oreo cheesecakes. Mm -hmm. Now this only takes a few ingredients. You literally yeah. throw it all together and then put it in the freezer for a bit. So. Should we get started? Yeah. Kay. Should we start with the filling? Yeah, let's start with the filling okay. first. Go. So we've got two eight ounce blocks of cream cheese that have been softened. You'll want these to be softened because you're gonna beat them and it's gonna be a lot easier if they're not cold and right out of the fridge. So just blend it until it starts getting fluffy. You'll keep mixing it in a minute. Okay. And then you're gonna add two and a half cups of powdered sugar. Mm -hmm. And this whole recipe calls for one package of Oreos, but you're gonna set 12 aside to go in the bottoms of the cheesecake. Okay. And then you're gonna turn the rest into just Oreo cookie crumbs. So t we took the cream out took, and just yes. did it into the crumbs, perfect. And then we reserve some of the crumbs to put on top. Yep, so it really is just a few ingredients, but you kind of separate a little yeah. bit as you go. Perfect. So that's it for the cream cheese filling. Okay, it's all mixed together. So now I think we're ready to assemble the cheesecakes. Okay, um, so it's just a whole Oreo, right? Yep. Okay, now it, the, the Oreo doesn't fit exactly in the bottom, but that's okay because it's just gonna freeze over and yeah, yeah. it really won't make that big of a difference. So now you can use a spoon and do this, but we're gonna just use cookie scoop because then they'll all be even and it will make our lives a whole lot easier instead of like using your finger to get it out. And then it, it just... doesn't get on the edge too. You don't yes. have to clean it up. Okay, so after she puts the filling in, I'm just gonna spread it around to try and fill up that cup. And it's okay if it's not perfect, but it will go a little bit over the top. So just kind of press it down in the middle so it covers the whole Oreo in the base. So my husband loves this recipe, and he thinks that it's like a lot of hard work to make this <laughs> recipe when Actual really- Actual cheesecake. <laughs> right? Like, yeah, it's like three ingredients. Yeah. That's all. That's my kind of cheesecake. Exactly. Because real cheesecake, I don't have the patience to be dealing with. It's, it's a lot. I know. It's a lot. And this is good for summertime too, where it, you just stick it in the freezer instead of having to wait for it to cook for an hour, or however long. Exactly. Cheesecake takes. Quick and easy. Cool. Perfect. All right, while well, she's finishing up there, I'm gonna take these lovely Oreo crumbs and just kind of sprinkle them on top of each one just to make them a little fancier. I mean, you don't have to do this step, but. Yeah, plus it covers up if you weren't very good at spreading like I was. <laughs> you did great. A little garnish. A little garnish, there we go. It's for the garnish. So after you've got all the extra Oreo cookie crumbs on top, we're just gonna put them in the freezer, probably for about an hour till they set up. Okay. And they're solid, good to Perfect. go. Perfect. Oh, I'm excited. All right, so we're done with this recipe, on to the next one. So the next recipe we're making is our no-bake eclair cake. This is one of our favorites. It also, I do have something <laughs> to admit. So we've made this recipe before on our YouTube channel, but um, that was way back in the day when it was a struggle, we'll just say that. So I'm gonna put a link in the description. We were learning. We were learning. We were learning how to edit, we were learning how to even make food. So if you want a good laugh, I'll put it down in the description for you. But <laughs> we're gonna show you how to make it, because it really is easy. And it's so good. And it's so good. Like people will think that you slave for hours, so. Okay, let's start. So we have three and a half cups of milk that we already poured in just to make our lives a little easier. Next we're gonna add like, it's a 3.4 ounce of the French vanilla Jello. So we're gonna put it in, it's like the instant pudding. You wanna pour that one in for me? Okay. Okay, so we're gonna mix these in first. There we go. Then we're just gonna mix it up real quick <laughs> with beaters. <laughs> You'll get it if you go see that video. 
All right, so once this is mixed, we're gonna put it in the fridge for a few minutes, let it set up, because we're, we're really making like the pudding out of it. So, okay. want to stick it in the fridge for me? Mm-hmm. Awesome. All right, so our pudding is all nice and stiff, and so we're ready to put in the Cool Whip. Do you want to put that in, and I will mix it with the beaters? Okay. So it's just a, what size is this? Eight ounce container of Cool Whip. Nice, and you can get the light, you can get any kind, it will still work and taste good, so. Can't go wrong. Pudding, Cool Whip. I think Cool Whip might be one of my most favorite <laughs> foods. <laughs> All right, so once it's all done, it will be a little bit runny. I mean, it's still thick, but it will thicken up as you put it in the fridge or freezer, yeah, depending on how thick you need it. So, all right, this, I know this is gonna sound crazy, but <laughs> this is the part of the eclair cake, is graham crackers and this, and that's about it, so. I'll I was surprised I when I found out that it was a graham cracker right? base, because something happens, like the consistency or something changes, changes. when you. Yeah, and it really makes it, it just has a different flavor to it, so. So am I okay to be overlapping these a little bit? Yep. Okay. So it, the recipe calls for a 16 ounce package of graham crackers. So anywhere, like, I would say like four. Yeah, four. probably four of those So packs. we'll do about three layers of graham crackers. Okay. So as she's finishing that up, we're going to put on about half of this pudding. And it's gonna make the graham crackers soft and that's what you want it to do because it's gonna be so good when it's done. So is this okay as yeah, far it's as okay a little overlap? overlap? Because I mean, you think of what's going on it, they're gonna get softer yeah. and then they'll form into the pan. So okay. as long, I might have to have you hold it a little bit as I dump it in, so. Okay. It might. It's a two man job. Actually, we're gonna do it <laughs> so you can see. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Sure, that's half, right? Close enough. Okay, so I'll just kind of push it off the sides. I remember my mom would make this in the summertime all the time when we were little. Yeah. It smells like favorite. childhood. It does smell <laughs> like childhood. These are most recipes we make on here smells like childhood. Summer and childhood. Our mom was a good cook. She's, I mean, she yeah. still is a good cook. Sorry, right, mom. All right, go ahead. Okay, take two. Take I'm two. I'm gonna start my full ones on this side this time. Good idea. And you really won't be able to tell where the breaks are on this recipe mm -hmm. because it, yeah, again, it all- Yeah, because you use a spatula yeah. to serve it and it's easy to cut through, so it- Exactly. It all works out. It's nice that it has the pudding on it. I know, it's <laughs> easier to get the graham crackers that second, yes. that second layer. Yes. And so then we'll just do one more layer of the graham crackers. That will be the top. Okay, so after all the graham crackers are on, you put on your favorite frosting. Now this is my mom's homemade chocolate frosting and it's amazing. I'm not gonna show you how I make it, but I'll put a link in the description for you so you can find it there. Or if you don't like to make frosting, if you wanna make this recipe really easy, you can just grab a can of chocolate frosting and just carefully spread it on and it will taste delicious. But, we love mom's frosting. We do. Mm -hmm. This frosting also is on her chocolate brownie recipe. I'll put a link below there. Yeah, it's those are good. Marshmallow brownies. And She's probably, famous for those. She is. Yeah. She is. Probably my favorite food. Okay, are we ready? Let's try it. Gonna spread it around. Now there are some parts where there's no graham cracker. You're just gonna put the frosting right over it like there is graham cracker and it will be just fine. Just gonna do a spin -aroo. So if you are making this, how far in advance do you need to make this? Because it does need to set up a little it bit. It does. I love to do it like the night before. Um, or you could do it, it needs about an hour, maybe two hours in the refrigerator okay. or freezer, depending on how cold you want it. Like some people like it frozen, uh -huh. but I like mine nice and soft, so I stick it in the fridge. Okay. All right. I am not fancy, but that's okay. We're moms, so we don't have to be. <laughs> Kids are just gonna tear exactly. through this. They're You're just fine. gonna eat it. All right, so let's stick this in the fridge for about an hour or so. Our last recipe is our no-bake peanut butter bars. Probably one of the most popular recipes on our blog. Yes. 
Now, when I was in medical school, well, when my husband was in medical school, we were so poor. You were in medical school, I, technically. Pretty much, I was, I was supporting. <laughs> but we were so poor, but this is one recipe that I made all the time because it was quick, it was easy, and it wasn't very expensive, yeah. so. And you probably had all these ingredients exactly, on hand. Exactly, so. exactly. Perfect for that. Okay, should we get started? Yeah. What should we do first? So um, let's, should we make the base first? Yes. Okay, so for the no-bake peanut butter base, we need a cup of melted butter. Like what, two sticks? Yes, two sticks of butter, Perfect. just melted. And then a cup of creamy peanut butter. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. It's a forgiving recipe, so it's okay. I, I think they've learned now <laughs> we eyeball everything. Right? <laughs> Nobody's got time for that. Yeah. Who measures perfectly? So, and then you've got two cups of graham cracker crumbs. Yep. And two cups of powdered sugar. Perfect. This really is like a dump and mix. Yeah, <laughs> dump and go, no bake. Exactly. So you're just gonna mix it together till it's all combined. And it and takes a minute, I remember, it takes a minute to mix because it's it just feels hard. Yeah. Like it's it it's kinda hard thick. to mix. Yeah, it does get thick. But where it's no bake, that's probably for the best, so it's <laughs> not runny and falling apart. Exactly. Okay, once it's all mixed, we're just going to put this into the bottom of either a nine by 13 inch pan, or if you want a thicker bar, you could do it in a nine by nine. But we've just sprayed it with nonstick cooking spray. And it is pretty sticky. So if you tried to spread this or press it into the pan with your hands, it's gonna be kind of, kind of hard to do. a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Unless, I mean, you could spray your hands with yeah. a cooking spray. It would make it a little easier. Okay, just gonna get it all, get all the goodness. Okay. There we go. Like she said, if you want it thicker, sometimes I'd make it in a nine by nine pan so the crust is, I guess the base, the base is really thick. That's how I like my peanut butter bars. It's almost the consistency of like a Reese's peanut butter cup. It's true, After it, it is, sets it up, is. it's kind of a soft yet firm. There we go, peanut butter layer. There you go. Look How's that? Good. Okay, I like it. I'll take that one. So for the topping, We've got a cup and a half of milk chocolate chips, right? And we like milk. If you like dark, you can use dark too, but yeah. I'm a milk kind of a yeah. girl. And then we're just gonna add a fourth cup of the creamy peanut butter, I can get another, another spoon, spoon, into the chocolate chips and melt that till it's totally smooth. So probably a minute or two in the microwave. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just eyeballing about a fourth cup of the creamy peanut butter in with my milk chocolate chips. Nice. And we'll just put this in the microwave. And if you notice, she just like, Literally just put it on top and it you can all stick melts it in. in. It yeah. will, it will. It's about a minute at a time. So we'll do it for a minute, then mix, then do it for another minute. All right, our chocolate and peanut butter is smooth and microwaved and melted. So we're just so gonna spread good. that on top, right? Yeah. You want me to hold the bowl for you? Oh, we'll you got we'll it. see how this goes. Hope there you guys go. can see. And it should be just enough to cover the top of either size pan. So if you are making this in the nine by nine, it will be a thicker, chocolate topping than in a nine by 13, but. Yeah. You can always add more too, like add two cups of chocolate chips and a little more peanut butter if you want more topping. Yeah. But we feel like this this is a good it's ratio pretty, yeah. of chocolate and peanut butter. So when it's all done, you're just gonna stick it in the fridge for about an hour, maybe two hours. You can even put it in the freezer to make it really hard. Now you wanna let it set up before you cut into it or it'll be kind of yeah. all over the place. All right, if you guys want more delicious desserts, make sure you check out this video right here and we will see you next week.